Hello everyone, Guy in the Shell here. So in the previous video entitled Understanding Binary, we talked about the binary and the decimal notation. So what is hexadecimal now? And why do we need yet another notation? Decimal we've seen was for human. Binary is for computers. So do we really need another one? When we interact with a computer to give it instructions, we store values in memory. To do that, we do not operate with individual bits. Indeed, we saw that bits can represent only two values or states, so they are rather useless in isolation. We instead use bytes. A byte is a group of bits that go together and that cannot be broken down. When you send instructions to the processor, you send bytes. When you access memory, you access it through a byte address. Address 1 points to byte 1. Address 2 points to byte 2, not bit 2. Bits themselves have no address. For a long time now, the convention has been that byte is 8 bits of information. We'll see in this video that this size is practical for at least two reasons. First, the ASCII table, which needs 7 bits, fits nicely in there, meaning that each character can be represented by a byte with little waste. Secondly, the fact that 8 is a power of 2 will come in handy. So that's the first piece of the puzzle for today's video. This is how modern computer work with bytes. The second piece of the puzzle is the hexadecimal notation. Building up of the concept that we saw in the previous video, the hexadecimal notation is base 16. In this base, we use 16 characters to represent numbers. That's the usual 0 to 9 numbers, to which we add the letter A, B, C, D, E, and F, which respectively represent 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So here too, we can take an hexadecimal number, say A5E, and convert it to base 10. E is in position 0. That's 14 times 16 to the power of 0, so that's 14. 5 is in position 1. So that's 5 times 16 to the power of 1, so that gives us 80. A is in position 2, so that's 10 times 16 to the power of 2, so that's 2560 which gives us a total of 2,654. So now we have our second piece of the puzzle. Let's see how this all fits. We have seen first that we use a convention to use data 8 bits at a time, and that this is called a byte. This means that a byte can hold numbers from 0 to 255. So the first thing is that this is not practical in terms of alignment of characters. A decimal number represented by a byte can use one, two, or three characters to be represented. So this, however, we could solve by writing the leading zeros always, even if in the day-to-day -day life we are not really used to that. Okay, the second thing is that it does not neatly align in terms of usage. If we take the number 10, the decimal number 10, which is the first decimal number that needs two characters to be written, its binary representation has nothing special to it. The same goes for 100, which is the first decimal number that needs three characters. And if on the other side, you take a full byte in binary, that is 1111111, where we have exhausted all the characters, in decimal, that is 255 which is about a fourth of the way in the numbers that can be written with three digits. So there is no logical alignment there. Lastly, and most importantly, it's not easy to read. I myself can't read them with bytes in binary. Eight characters represented 255 values. That's too much for me in my head. I can do the base conversion and decode it, but that's cumbersome. And that is where hexadecimal comes in. So we have seen that 8 bits can represent 2 to the power of 8 values, those 256 values. 
hexadecimal now is base 16. And 16 is 2 to the power of 4. And you know what? 2 to the power of 8, our byte, is 2 to the power of 4 times 2 to the power of 4. Hmm. This means that binary and hexadecimal are going to align. If we take any four bits and enumerate all the values they can represent, we get exactly all the values that a single hexadecimal character can represent. From 0000, 0, 0, 0 in binary, which is 0 in hexadecimal, we can go all the way up to 1111 in binary, which is F in hexadecimal. F being the last character in hexadecimal and 1111 being the last value that four bits of binary data can take. And so in turns, that means that A bits can be exactly represented by two hexadecimal characters, each encoding half of the byte value. So here we have 1010, 1110 in binary, and we can pretty easily see that it's equal to AE in hexadecimal. So that means that when I see a byte, A bits binary, I can split it in the middle and easily convert it to hexadecimal. There are only 16 values in a four bits binary number. And so you get used to it and it's pretty easy to recognize those 16 values. And even better, a two character hexadecimal number is reasonably easy to decode to decimal by hand. You just have one multiplication by 16, up to 16 times 16, and one addition. And with a bit of practice, it's become pretty easy. And that's what makes the hexadecimal notation so practical. You might know that if you try to open a binary file in a text editor, you get a lot of garbage. You might see a bit of text that is readable, but it's mostly garbage. And this is because the content of the file that is organized in bytes, as we have discussed, is not meant to be interpreted as text using the ASCII table, for example, like we saw in the previous video. Instead, those bytes are numbers that represent instructions for our computer. Now, if we take an hexadecimal reader like XXT, for example, that is often included in Linux distributions, we can open binary files and see what's inside without trying to decode it in text. Such editor usually have three parts. On the left, you have addresses. We don't care about that today. On the right, you have the text representation. But for binary files, we just said that this is mostly garbage, so we'll ignore it. What's interesting is the middle part. That's where each byte of data is represented as a single two-digit hexadecimal number. You might see that those are grouped by four hexadecimal characters instead of two. Four hexadecimal characters will represent two bytes of information and that's usually referred to a word in the computer world. And that is why, by convention, this is shown like that. This is a default, and it can be shown differently. Now, with a tool like XXD, we start to be able to read binary file, although we don't yet really know what those values mean, but that we'll discuss in future videos. Finally, I wanted to show you how you can play with hexadecimal numbers in Python. We saw last time that numbers are interpreted as base 10 by default, like this 10 value. We can tell Python that we mean 10 to be binary by prefixing it with the 0b prefix. Similarly, we can tell Python that we want this 10 to be interpreted as the 10 hexadecimal number and use the 0x prefix. And now Python sees that it's a 16 value. We also saw that Python can give us the binary representation of a decimal number through the bin function. 
So bin 10 would give us the 1010 binary number. Similarly, we have an x function that can give us the hexadecimal representation of the decimal number 10. And Python tells us that it's 0xA. Finally, we saw that we could use the int function to convert a non-prefix string into a number. We say that by default it uses a base 10 to interpret the string. But we could give the base as the second parameter. So we could say interpret 10 as a base 2 number, in which case Python would tell us this is 2. Similarly, we can say interpret 10 as a base 16, an hexadecimal number, in which case Python will tell us this is 16. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. As a reminder, I did the binary and the hexadecimal video as an introduction to the series I want to do about reversing binary. In this series, we'll use hexadecimal a lot. And since this is not a day-to-day -day thing for most of us, I felt that a refresher sounded like a good idea. I hope I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.